So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another throwback rebuild. We are using the same file that we did with the Oklahoma City Thunder, and today it's going to be the 2015-2016 Philadelphia 76ers. Although I believe technically the process in Philadelphia started during the 2013-14 season, we're only a few years into it, and by far, this might be one of the worst teams I've ever rebuilt. Real life, this team went 10-72 throughout the course of this season, Ended it up with them having the number one overall pick, taking Ben Simmons, a decision that they probably regret now, but at the time it was very obvious. We're going to have three seasons today, hopefully turn this team around, we had a championship. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. I've been really enjoying kind of going back and doing some throwback rebuilds that aren't necessarily, you know, the LeBron era or the Kobe and Shaq era. I really like it when I'm able to find good rosters, good scenarios. So if you guys have any that you really know off the top of your head, let me know down below in the comment section along with what team you want me to rebuild from that era. So very much looking forward to this one today, man. The process, which I don't even, has it ended in Philadelphia? Are they still processing? I, I don't really know. Let's get into it. Viewer discretion is advised. We are going to go ahead and check out this Philadelphia 76ers roster as it is talked about in the intro. This team won only 10 games throughout this regular season. I don't really know if there's much hope of being anywhere better than that. So, let's start out at the point guard spot. Ish Smith, 27 years old, 76 overall. I guess you can call Ish Smith an NBA journeyman. I'm pretty sure he was just on that Nuggets team that won it all last year. Isaiah Cannon, Cannon, I'm always, I always used to fuck up this dude's name. But again, probably not going to lead to much. Kendall Marshall's here. And then TJ McConnell, who funny enough, probably turned out to be the best player out of all four of these guys. He's here. i definitely like to get him some playing time just because I know there's a little bit of potential there. Shooting guard spot, Nick Stauskas. I don't know. Small forward, Hollis Thompson, Robert Covington, and Jeremy Grant. Now, Jeremy Grant actually ended up being a pretty good player. He's with the Portland Trailblazers right now. Man's getting paid a shit ton of money. So he actually ended up being a pretty good player. Not exactly sure what his role is going to be here today at a 70 overall and a 3-year rebuild. But we will figure it out. And for those of you asking why is it only a 3-year rebuild, because I've already addressed this multiple times. Come summertime, once the NBA season actually ends, we'll be getting into 5-year, 7-year, maybe even some 10-year rebuilds. I promise you they are coming. I'm going to figure it out. Power forward spot. We have Carl Landry here, who's 32, one of the veteran presence on this team. Got Rashawn Holmes here. Christian Woods here, who I didn't even know was on this team. I'm not going to lie to you, but again, he's only 68 overall. Not going to provide much in terms of winning, but again, ended up having a pretty good NBA career. Still is. Center spot. This was, at the time, a very confusing era for centers in Philadelphia. You know, they had just taken Jalil Okafor, what, third overall? Is this accurate? I think it was third overall, but he's entering his rookie season right now where, as you can see, he's the highest overall, maybe has the most potential, but we all very damn well know Jill Okafor didn't really turn into an NBA star like many people predicted, myself included at the time. Uh, Nerlens Noel had a good NBA career, definitely didn't turn into a superstar by any sort, but again, he's a solid backup center option for us here today. And then obviously the best out of everybody with Mr. Joel Embiid. The reigning NBA MVP just actually came back last night watching that game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, actually, two nights ago when you're seeing this video. But nonetheless, clearly turned out to be the best player here. I want to get him as much playing time as possible. I'm just hoping the man develops very, very well. Uh, and then Elton Brand, who's 36 years old. And again, a good player. He's probably one of the better players on the team right now. Just unfortunately, with all three of these centers... I really don't need him. So we are going to make a few trades. Um, for me, I'm definitely starting Embiid. There's there's no really ifs, ands, or buts about that. I have to decide what I want to do with Okafor and Noel because although we all know at this point in time, we have the luxury of this knowledge already, we know they never really turned into anything special, either of them. But here in 2K, sometimes progression goes a little bit different. So I don't want to give up on either of them if you know... There's no reason to yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an Elton Brand trade. Might move some positions around. I'll see you guys whatever's next. Our first move of today's video is going to come with the Atlanta Hawks, and it is definitely not to get a Kardashian on this team. We are going ahead and making this trade with Atlanta to get an unprotected first-round pick in 2016. I'm hoping that draft pick turns out to be somewhat valuable, but it is definitely good to have a decent draft pick nonetheless. Isaiah Cannon, Ish Smith... Both solid players, actually our two highest overall point guards, but ultimately, with both being expiring deals, this team having really no direction right now, I'd much rather have the draft pick. So welcome to the team, Chris Kardashian. I'll take the draft pick. That is one of what could be potentially many moves. 
Our next trade is going to come with the San Antonio Spurs, and it's going to involve us acquiring yet another draft pick, but more importantly, well, maybe not more importantly, but we are getting Kevin Martin here as well. Real reason I'm doing this is for the draft pick, as I'm assuming many of you can already figure out, but Kevin Martin going to come in and going to be a backup starter at the shooting guard spot. I have absolutely no idea, but he's a good veteran presence on a multi-year contract, and ultimately we're getting rid of two players that I really didn't think were ever going to play for us anyway. So, Kevin Martin, welcome to the team. Excited to have you. More excited to have the draft pick, but nonetheless, we've kind of figured out what we're going to do with this team. I am going to start TJ McConnell. I don't know. I'm not trying to be competitive. And if, again, there's a lot of untapped potential in there, I want to go ahead and untap that. That's not really okay. Um, Martin and Stauskas, I think age-wise, it probably makes a little bit more sense to start Stauskas again. Hypothetically speaking, if we were trying to be competitive, maybe I start the one overall higher Kevin Martin with a little bit more experience. But uh, here today, that's not going to be an issue right now. Small forward spot's interesting for me because I don't necessarily have to trade Hollis Thompson here. He is our highest overall. But there's also a big part of me that says, why would I trade Rocco or Jeremy Grant, even though they are expiring, when I know that both of these players ended up having pretty good NBA careers and continue to have good NBA careers. So that's where I'm a little bit torn right now. I feel like it makes sense to have these guys actually go ahead and play. But then again, they're going to enter free agency this offseason. I damn well could lose them for nothing. So, uh, And then I moved New Orleans Noel to the power forward spot. His overall didn't change whatsoever. Going to be him and Carl Landry here. And uh, Noel is going to be playing next to Joel Embiid in the front court, who I do anticipate will be my starter. And then it's kind of a similar thing with Rashawn Holmes and Christian Wood. Ultimately, if we had 10 years in this rebuild, maybe I hang on to everybody here just because I know they all turned out to be pretty good NBA players. But here today, especially with just knowing damn well, I'm probably not going to re-sign all these guys anyways. If anybody wants to give me any sort of draft pick for any of these guys, I'd take it. I really probably would. This is a first-round pick from the Atlanta Hawks. You also get Tiago Splitter, who I have less than zero interest in. But honestly, he could be a contract we trade at some point in time. So, yeah, I know trading Jeremy Grant and Christian Wood is probably not the smartest thing in the world. But in a situation like this, an unprotected first-round pick, actually from the Minnesota Timberwolves, probably about as good as it's going to get. So, um, I don't know if Tiago Splitter has a trade market. If anybody wants to give me another draft pick, I'll take it. If not, I'll just hang on to him. Probably have him as a trade piece this offseason. I could take Channing Fry. I don't really love the idea of maybe attempting to move that deal. I could just take Chris Birdman Anderson here. Again, there's some options. So there definitely is a little bit of a trade market here in terms of draft picks. Looks like it was really just those two teams offering me anything. So we'll do this deal with the Grizzlies. I'll hang on to Anderson. Oh, that's trade exception. Let's set the rotation for what is definitely going to be a very painful first season here in Philly. Rotation is finalized again on paper in real life. I mean, this team sucks. There's really no way to sugarcoat it. But we're not playing this year to try to be competitive, to try to win. What we are playing for is something I'm going to show you guys real quick. Just make everybody feel a little bit better. How pretty is this? All of these draft picks unprotected. What is that? One, two, two, four, six, eight. Ten. Is that 10 unprotected first round picks between 2016 and 2018? That's insane. That's absolutely nuts. All right. Hoping some of those obviously turn out to be very good. I have a good feeling our first round pick this year is definitely going to be in the top three. TJ McConnell, Nick Stauskas, Robert Covington, Nerlens Noel, Joel Embiid is your one through five. Jaleel Okafor will be my sixth man off the bench again. I don't know actually how well Jaleel Okafor will progress. Never really turned into much in the NBA, but here entering his rookie campaign in 2K, I don't really know what's going to happen. Carl Landry behind him. You got Kevin Martin in here, Hollis Thompson, and then Kendall Marshall. I have a very, very big feeling that I would say at least 80% of this team will not be back next season, but it is going to be a painful first season here in Philadelphia, and let's just get it over with. Now, this team was definitely bad, as we suspected, but, 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 they were better than they actually were in real life. We won 14 games. Real life team only won 10. It's trending in the right direction. I mean, we're already starting off hot around here. LeBron James is your MVP. Joel Embiid does, oh my fucking Jesus, what the fuck? Seriously? 27 a game? That's it. How? I mean, uh, I was going to say, how is he not in the MVP conversation? I don't know. Dip shit, maybe because his team won 14 games. That's insane. I didn't think he'd be putting up those kind of numbers, but good for you, Joel. Love to see the face of our franchise performing well in his rookie season. Or, well, rookie, you get it. Lou Will, sixth man of the year. Anthony Davis, your deep boy. Giannis, most improved. Popovich, oh my God. Head coach of the 66-win San Antonio Spurs. We in the playoff race? 
Anything like that? Were we fighting for a spot? Tell me we were close. I'm kidding. Yeah, 14 and 68 is not good. It was the worst record in the league. Three games worse than Denver. I'm actually surprised they were that bad. Uh, here are the numbers on the season. Embiid, Jill, Okafor, Stauskas, Noel. Actually, double-double. Not bad. Um, again, it's going to be assessing what works with this team and what doesn't. And what works is Joel Embiid. What doesn't is everything else. So let's sim through the playoffs. Get rid and get over what's going to be likely a very, very painful rebuild. LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers go on to sweep the Memphis Grizzlies. Who's on the Grizzlies? Conley Allen. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right. Offseason number one. A, uh, a very important offseason for us. It's going to kind of set the tone of the entirety of today's video. So we have to make sure that we do this thing right because we're definitely going to have a high draft pick. We just got to make sure that we actually use that draft pick in the best way possible. And that Denver pick, do we actually have it? I don't know, but I'm going to take it. Oh my God. All right. We have the first overall pick in the fourth overall pick. Now we look at staff signing here. Lionel Hollins. Okay. I can't really work with ratings like that. There's, I mean, I just, sorry. I gotta, I gotta move on. I do. Um, Stalver is here. He's listed as an assistant GM. Who are the head coach options? I see Nate McMillan here. Those ratings are kind of tough. All of these ratings are kind of tough to be honest. Antonio Harper. I don't know much about you, but it looks like you might be my best option. Um, Gabriel, yeah, I mean, these, these, who's Otis, Owen Cooper, excuse me. What are these ratings? Is this Mike Woodson? It is. Yeah, I mean, all these ratings are just absolutely terrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign Antonio Harper, at least attempt to, and he's going to take a four-year contract with us. I have no idea if he's actually going to stay here the entire time or not. But we are up to the draft with two top four picks. See so you guys, we have a trade. We're in the draft. I've decided I'm going to use all my draft picks. Now, I am probably not going to take Ben Simmons first overall. I mean, on paper, he's clearly the best prospect here, as he was in real life. And sure, he had definitely a few really good seasons with Philadelphia, but we know what he turned out to be. I mean, it's very, very rare that a player starts his career off so well, and then it's just basically unplayable at this point in time. So he's not going to be my pick. It's probably going to be Brandon Ingram. I know Jalen Brown's here. He's fantastic as well. I love me some Jalen Brown. But ultimately, I think Brandon Ingram is probably just like slightly ahead of it for what I'm working for today. Don't get me wrong. It's not a shot at Jalen Brown. I love JB. Celtics fan here. But Brandon Ingram's going to be my pick today. And then we also do have the fourth overall pick. So I'm not exactly sure who we want to take there. Let's look at the summary so far. It was Simmons and then Jalen Brown kind of as expected while he went to the Celtics. That's funny. Um, all right, so there's a couple options here. I think Jamal Murray jumps out at me immediately. I know Dra or Dragon Bennett. Demonis Sabonis obviously turned out to be pretty good as well. I think Murray's probably going to be my pick. Point guard is definitely a big position of need right now. Not to say Sabonis isn't great, but we can see he's already a lower overall. Doesn't necessarily fill the biggest position of need on this team. Might be a little bit more of a project. I'm not saying that in a bad way, but I do like Jamal Murray quite a bit as well. So Jamal Murray, going to be my guy there. And I think we have one more pick. It's actually from the Hawks. It is the 23rd overall pick. So maybe a lower end bench player we could draft here. Ante Zizic, Denzel Valentine. I see Malik Beasley here. Not a bad option. Who is this? Pretty high, highly ranked prospect. Uh, not going to work for me, though. All right, I think Malik Beasley is probably the safest pick here. Um, I don't really see anybody else who really turned out too well. Uh, Zizic maybe could be a viable option, but Beasley's going to be my guy. Okay, let's send to the end of the draft. Three good picks for us here in round number one. Ingram, Jamal Murray, and Malik Beasley. So now looking forward, team player options. Yes, obviously going to bring back everybody here, especially Embiid. And uh, now it's about finding out what we kind of want to do. Roko, I think, could have been you know a solid piece for us. I'm not giving him a five and a half million dollar qualifying. Uh, my idea now is to look at free agency. It doesn't look like we have any major free agents. I don't know why LeBron's restricted, but he obviously he is, and uh, I highly doubt he'd want to come here anyway. So you know, I think LeBron's probably out of the running. Unfortunately, this free agency class isn't very good. I think the biggest thing for us is going to be saving up our money, maybe spending next off season, but doesn't mean there can't be any trades made. So let's see what we we can do oh my god we just pulled off a blockbuster trade with the golden state warriors and acquired clay thompson we sent out jalil okafor and about every other bench piece we have on this team that was not going to play didn't give up a single draft pick and acquired our 88 overall shooting guard here and clay thompson wow i did not think that was going to be a real possibility 
legitimately did not give up a single draft pick, and I am super excited to have the absolute sniper that is Clay Thompson on this team. So he's going to be paired up with Jamal Murray in the backcourt. I'm with McConnell be behind Murray. I'm not going to keep Kevin Martin. I'm actually going to give Malik Beasley a little bit of run here in his rookie year. I think if we develop him a little bit, he could definitely be a beneficial piece And what hopefully by the end of year three will be a championship team. Ingram going to start here at the three. I don't love the idea of starting Nolan Zoel moving forward. I wouldn't mind exploring the trade market for him. I know we could have hypothetically gone ahead and drafted him on a Sabonis to fill this position, but again, Embiid, Thompson, Ingram, Murray, I mean, we are just really trending in the right direction right now. I've decided to acquire what could be our power forward of the future here in Julius Randle in a trade with the Los Angeles Lakers. We're sending out Nerlens Noel, Kevin Martin, a 2017 first round pick, actually a swap with Lakers and Spurs. We'll get whichever pick is probably worst. And then Julius Randle is only 21 years old. He's had two seasons in the league. All around, the points really aren't there. Rebound numbers are good. Shooting splits, especially from three, aren't great. But I do really think he could be a definite impact player for us. And again, the biggest thing here is we're going to be saving money. He's not going to be costing us a ton of money. Obviously, we look at the grand picture of things. He turned out to be a much better player than Nerlens Noel did. So, excited to have Randall here. I'm not saying he's going to be my starter for the rest of the video, but him and Joel Embiid in the front court is definitely super fun. So, at this point in time, we have seven players on this team. As I mentioned before, we even kicked off year one last season. Roster's going to look entirely different, and I think we're kind of living up to that right now. So three through five, we got to sign some backups. We clearly do have some money here. I'm not looking to spend a ton. Um, I don't really think that makes a lot of sense with the way this team's kind of constructed right now. So like a guy like Jeff Green, bring him in on a two-year deal. Wouldn't be the worst signing in the world in the power forward spot. Like, I'm not going to sign 38-year-old Dirk. Where does Dirk want to go? Looks like he might go to the Houston Rockets. Interesting. Um, other than that, Terrence Jones... See Michael Beasley here, 27, could be a good veteran presence for us. We'll bring him in on a two-year. And then the center spot, there's some decent names here. Uh, you know, we got a 22-year-old Andre Drummond who's definitely going to command a lot of money. Honestly, we look at it from, you know, broad sense of things. Joel Embiid's going to be playing the majority of the center minutes. I mean, hell, the man averaged 27 a game last year. So looking at some options here, how about a guy like Mo Spates? Two-year deal, relatively cheap. I think that makes a lot of sense. So three new veteran backups that we're bringing into this team. Everybody else from the past, good luck, good riddance, get out. We are probably not going to be a top-tier contender next season, but we have set ourselves up well for what could be some really good success in year three. Maybe even year two. I'll see you guys at the rotation. Unless I'm absolutely losing my mind, which I very well could be, it tends to happen from time to time, wasn't Clay Thompson an 88 overall? I swear to God when I made the trade last offseason, the man was an 88 overall. He's 26 years old, he says he's satisfied, meaning the morale's not hurt, and trust me, I already went ahead and checked, it's not, he's fine. Satisfied? I don't know why the overall takes a three hit. Why does that happen? God bless 2K and these stupid fucking developers. Jamal Murray, Clay Thompson, Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle, Joel Embiid are one through five. Bench unit's going to be led by Uncle Jeff. He's going to be my sixth man off the bench backing up Brandon Ingram. We got Michael Beasley in here. Mo Spates, TJ McConnell, and Malik Beasley rounding out this bench unit. So really good mix of some young, some veteran players, some players that I really think are going to be transcendent guys for us throughout the course of this rebuild. So again, we're not going to probably be up there with the top teams in the East, but maybe fight for a lower playoff spot. I'd definitely be happy. I'll see you guys at the end of year number two. Well, I'll be damned. LeBron James, another MVP this time. It's in a Portland Trailblazers jersey. I don't fucking know. Him and Dame's a dangerous duo. We go 52 and 30, which definitely surprised the absolute hell out of me. Again, I was hoping this team could fight for like seven, eight seeds, something like that. But no, 52 wins in year two. I'd say that's ahead of schedule after a 14 win season. I'll take it. Ben Simmons, your rookie of the year. Now, I know his numbers are going to be good on paper, and maybe 2K, according to it at least, would change the projections and the trajectory of this man's career, but I don't know. I'm very happy with the guys we got here. Tobias Harris, sixth man of the year, is also in Detroit. You got Anthony Davis as your deep boy. Carl Anthony Towns, most improved. Brooke Blackman, your coach of the year, the 61-win Toronto Raptors. All right, Tamar, Kyle Lowry. Kind of coming on nice there. We are a three seed here in the Eastern Conference. We are only behind the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, wait, 50 wins. Sorry, not 52. I fucked that up. Uh, 50 and 32. Still very much ahead of schedule. But yeah, 11 games behind the one seed here in the East. And uh, yeah, Portland, Damon, LeBron doing their thing. Just curious. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, I got Rondo coming off the bench as well. Um, all right, let's dive into some numbers. Let's see how everybody played throughout the course of this regular season. Joel Embiid, not quite the 27-point dominant performance he had in his rookie season, but nonetheless, 19 and a half, 14 Definitely very, very solid. Clay Thompson, Julius Randle, very nice emergence out of him. You see Jamal Murray, good rookie season. Brandon Ingram, thought he would actually be a little bit higher. Would have expected him to maybe be where Randle is, but 
I'll live with it. Beasley, Green, Spates, Beasley again, and then McConnell. Rebounds was obviously Embiid, and assist was Jamal Murray. So first round of the playoffs, we got the Chicago Bulls. You got Derrick Rose here, a little bit older at this point in time. You got Jimmy Butler, who's, I don't want to say entering his prime, because the man's 27, had some really good seasons here. But ultimately, this was kind of around the time that Jimmy Butler kind of took that next step. And uh, playoff Jimmy eventually got there. Not now, but he did. Uh, Pau Gasol is here. 36 years old, kind of just reminiscent on the glory days at this point, but he's still a solid veteran center. All right, we are currently up 2-0 against the Chicago Bulls. Make it 3-0, make it 3-1, and that is a five-game series victory. All right, Michael Carter-Williams, Chris Middleton, Giannis is an 86 overall. He is here. He's not quite yet the dominant MVP player that he is today, but he's still pretty good. Hey, oh, my God, maybe he is. Okay, I stand corrected. Let's get into it here in round two against the Milwaukee Bucks. We split the first two on our home floor, lose three, win four, go up 3-2. We're in these finals. We're in the East finals, taking on the Toronto Raptors. As I expected, you got Lowry and DeRozan. Some nice veteran pieces here with Carroll and Johnson. You got Timothy Mozgov in here. Jonas Valanciunas. Not sure why Valanciunas isn't starting. And Mozgov, wasn't he one of the victims? I don't want to say victims, but actually culprits would be the right word. Of that huge cap jump back in 2016. It was the, was it the, Lakers? It was the Lakers who gave him a big fat contract, wasn't it? I believe it was. Let's go through these finals right now. We drop game one, drop game two, win three, lose four, lose in five. A disappointing but not surprising end. And the Toronto Raptors get a championship. You see LeBron leave the East, and that, that's what happens with Toronto. They get it done. Can you imagine if just like one of those seasons that LeBron and Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan were all battling in the Eastern Conference Finals, or even some of the years in the East Semis, they fought so hard. Imagine just one time. The ball rolls a little bit differently. The Raptors go on, maybe win a championship. I don't know if they ever would have beaten any of those Warriors teams, but you know what I'm saying nonetheless. Imagine how much the course of NBA history changes because Kawhi Leonard probably doesn't end up a Toronto Raptor. Just insane to think about how one move like that, one series outcome, can change basketball forever. It really is crazy. Uh, Dirk rode off into the sunset playing his final year with the Houston Rockets. See Mike Miller, Mike Dunleavy, Nene, Kamen. A lot of good names there, man. really is. Time out. This man's been in the league for 37 years. I don't even know if he was in the womb 37 years ago. There's absolutely no way that this man right here, this looks like an intern and an accounting head. Are you kidding me? There's just absolutely no way this guy has been in the league for 37 years. He doesn't even look like he's seven. I mean, what is... Okay, you know what? We're spending way too much time on things that don't matter. All right, historic changes. Uh, timeout system. They're putting... I think the Nike logo is actually already on the jerseys according to 2K, but who cares? Um, all right, draft lottery. I saw the 76ers logo twice. Looks like we were projected some late lottery selections. Let's just see where we end up landing. We end up with the 13th and 14th overall pick. We also have number 16 I saw there. So definitely not nothing. I think Antonio Harper did a fantastic job. Not a guy I've really ever signed before, so we'll hang on to him. But yeah, some definite good first round picks. We got three selections, 13 through 16. And uh, yeah, at this point in time, it's about making upgrades to the roster and also making upgrades in the right place. So I don't want to force anything. But we're heading into the final year here, so we got to be as good as it can possibly be. We're going to talk to the Indiana Pacers and see if there's any way for us to possibly acquire Paul George. Now, Paul George is on an expiring contract, meaning it might not be as hard to trade for him. And look, I know I just drafted Brandon Ingram first overall, but ultimately, Julius Randle, Jamal Murray, both had better seasons for us here than he did. And if I want to really be serious about contending in the final regular season, I got to make an upgrade. So there's nothing wrong with taking Ingram first overall. Ultimately, though, I'd much rather have Paul George, especially at this point in time. So let's see. If we could possibly work on some sort of deal here, uh, I'd be willing to maybe give up most spates as well. I mean, again, I have a lot of draft picks. I'll give you a 13, I guess, as well. I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, okay, wow. That was a lot to definitely give up, but we're getting a really good player here, and Paul George going to take over at my starting small forward spot, meaning we have no draft picks this year. At least I don't think so, right? I hope I didn't. Yeah, no, none. All right, team player options. Embiid, Randall, McConnell all coming back here, qualifying Shane Larkin, take a hike, pal. We enter a free agency class that Steph Curry is unrestricted. Oh, my God. Fuck. I don't have the money for him right now, but I feel like there has to be a way. How much money do I... Wait, do I have any free agents first and foremost? I really don't. Wait, do I? No, I don't. Okay, so how much am I off by? We're about four... Wait, what is that? Yeah, we're about four and a half million below what he's asking. What is this contract offer? This is basically 150 over four. So let's just get 150 divided by four. It's about 37 and a half a year. If I want to get up to that number, I'm going to have to clear up about four or five million bucks in cap space. 
if I wanted to do that, it would probably mean Jamal Murray has to go. And that's just me hoping and praying that Steph Curry signs with me, which obviously is not a guarantee. Or I could trade all three of these guys. I think it might be worth the risk. I'm going to do it. Now, end of the day, if I have to clean out my bench after this and re kind of tool that bench unit, that's fine. But for a chance to get an unrestricted Steph Curry in free agency, I'm going to do it pretty much 10 times out of 10. So no, I don't love cleaning out something that was actually pretty good for us last year. But if it lands me Steph Curry, I'm going to take it 10 times out of 10. So obviously we have to get to that point. But uh, we're going to make an offer and we're going to hope and pray that's the most it lets me give him. Fuck, he's not going to accept a deal, is he? All right, well, now let's turn our attention somewhere else. Oh, shit. Because <laughs> Giannis is definitely going to get matched. In terms of any other unrestricted free agents, I see Paul Millsaps here could be a little bit of an upgrade at that power forward spot. I don't really have any interest in Dwight Howard. I don't think he'd probably have any interest in coming here. Damn it, it's like really just Steph Curry or nobody. And that really does suck. So you know what? What's just, yeah, no, Steph's not coming here. All right, Steph goes to the Spurs which sucks, but is kind of understandable. I want to sim through it just to make sure he actually accepts the offer, and he did. All right, so I kind of missed out on that one, which is kind of fine. Hurts a little bit, but it just means we have to build back up this bench unit, uh, which we definitely have some funds to do so now, which is definitely good. Uh, Dennis Schroeder's in free agency here. Has some offers here. I think, honestly, like Michael Carter-Williams. There's just not a lot of good free agents here, and it's kind of weird. It's really almost disappointing. Are you not Okay. I can't win. I cannot fucking win right now. Oh, my God. Um, all right. Patty Mills will sign to a two-year deal. Um, and, again, I'm still going to have to make some tough decisions. Got like Tim Hardaway Jr., the decent backup shooting guard option. And then, oh, boy, what else do I need? I need power forward and center, right? Yeah, I do. Okay. Fuck. I really – I thought I had it, and I just – I didn't, man. I didn't. So, you know what? There still actually could be one trade coming because I have some ideas. Gorgie Jang going to be brought in as well. And then who is the be oh my god this is the best free agent right now Mo Williams oh my god all right I am going to do something a little bit cheesy here I'll be back all right we're here at the start of the third and final regular season we're making a trade with the Denver Nuggets which funny enough is going to send Jamal Murray actually to Denver it's going to result in us picking up Mike Conley who's clearly at this point in time anyways an upgrade at the point guard spot look I know I don't like trading away all the players I just drafted in the first round first four picks actually of the 2016 yes 2016 NBA draft but here in a three-year rebuild I got to kind of make it work so Conley welcome to the team we also picked up Emmanuel Moutier in this deal meaning we could either keep him hang on to Emmanuel Moutier or we could use him to maybe upgrade this team somewhere else now I know Julius Randle had a really good season for us but he's still only a 79 overall so just curious what would happen any offers here Again, I know it's tough with the money and Derek Favors. Like, would Derek Favors really excite me enough? Not even. Like, Julius Randle was better, if not just as good. So, you know what? No, I'm hanging on to him. Um, and then I think there is one more upgrade, though, out there. I think I want to upgrade. We'll upgrade back a power forward spot. So, we're going to actually go ahead and trade away Patty Mills because it looks like Moody is actually pretty good. So, we're going to do him, Miritich, and a draft pick. It sucks that I have all these draft picks, but this is where you kind of bite yourself in the ass with all these rookie contracts. So, uh, I need a power forward. Need a power forward. Nick Batum is listed as a small forward, but definitely play the stretch four. Uh, I see James Johnson in here. I mean, these offers are just fucking dog shit. Uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist is only six foot six, but uh, just de decent. All right, one second. We're going to try to acquire Kyle Kuzma here from the Charlotte Hornets. Again, it's probably not going to be anything too special. It takes two first round picks, but he's an upgrade here. Similar overall, same exact, actually same overall, same age as Julius Randle. And uh, yeah, you know, we've made some pretty big upgrades to this team. I really hope it is enough, but we are definitely in a better position than we were last year. And hell, last year we were all the way in the Eastern Conference Finals. So after a bunch of moves, let's set this rotation. Last season, we won 50 games, made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals before we flamed out in a season that was probably a little bit ahead of schedule anyways. This season, we went ahead and made a whole bunch of moves, moves that I really do think make us true contenders here in the Eastern Conference. So it would be a very, very rare case that I win a championship with a guy who's lower than an 80 overall in my starting five, but Randall's been playing well. He probably deserves to be an 80 plus anyways. Mike Conley, Clay Thompson, Paul George, Julius Randall himself, and then Joel Embiid as my one through five. Kuzma's going to be my new six man off the bench. You got Emmanuel Moody who we just picked up here as well. You got good veterans here with Jeff Green, Tim Hardaway Jr. is young, and then we got Gorgie Jang as well. So again, I think this team is good. Uh, this is probably one of those rebuilds that would have been good to have a five-year rebuild video. But again, you all know my stance on that and when those are coming. So I do apologize in advance. I'll see you guys at the end of the final regular season. I knew this team was going to be good. I guess I just didn't know how good. Yeah, we went 74-8. and eight.
Do I think this team is 74 and 8 good? Not a fucking chance in hell. But when 2K blesses me with shit like this, I tend to take it. Joel Embiid's your MVP. Very, very dominant season. How many times in NBA history has a guy won MVP without scoring 20 plus points a game, though? I cannot imagine it is many. Daniel, what? Okay. This is like Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell class. How the hell is Daniel Tice? Okay. Tobias Harris, six man of the year once again. DeAndre Jordan is your deep poise shooter, most improved. Antonio Harper, definitely going to win coach of the year, winning 74 games. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know how this team wins 74 games. I know, again, on paper we look pretty good. I just, I don't think it's a 74 win team. So um, I don't want to get ahead of myself and get way too confident heading into the playoffs, but the team's definitely good. Don't get me wrong, but. 74 feels like a little bit of a stretch. Maybe everybody on their prime on this team would be 74 wins, but we're not at that point. But I guess we are, according to 2K. Uh, there's not a God's chance in hell this team beats us. So let's just sim the round, get this one over with. Moving on to the East Semis here, we got the Washington Wizards. you got an 89 overall John Wall. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I tried to trade for him at one point. 81 overall Brad Beal, who's putting up pretty good numbers. Looks like he actually should be higher than 81. you got Dewan Summers here, Markeith Morris, Marcin Gortat. I think this team is very much beatable. Let's sim through the second round of the playoffs here. We have yet to lose a game. We sweep. All right, Eastern Conference Finals. Us in the Pistons here. Simmons, a little bit of revenge for maybe not drafting him. I see Andre Drummond here. This would be the worst spacing front court I have actually ever seen. All right, let's get into it. We win game one, win game two. Again, yet to lose a game so far. And I don't know if it's something in like the script of 2K that really likes the way this team's put together, but I'm assuming that's probably what's going on because I I, I don't want to you know sound like I don't want to I don't even know. what I have had some teams where I have like four or five 90 plus overalls and I've had a harder time winning a championship than that. I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, I mean count your blessings I guess. This team is very good. I don't want to like misconstrue the situation, but I mean, I guess there's four 87 pluses, but to not lose a single game in the playoffs, it, it feels a little crazy to me. So I'm not going to get skeptical of 2K, especially when they're nice to me. When they bullshit me, I definitely will. But today is not one of those days. They did something good. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, leave a like down below. That'd obviously be awesome. Let me know any other rebuilds you want to see, whether historic challenges, whatever it may be, down below in the comment section. Uh, I am definitely open to doing rebuilds from other eras. It doesn't just have to be 2015, 16. If you want me to go even further back to like 2010, 2011, I'd be happy to do so. If you want me to go a little bit ahead to the start of like 2017, 2018, or 2019, I can definitely do that. Um, I just went to this one because I have a really good saved file that uh, looks pretty good on paper at least and has been working out for me so far. So um, if anybody knows the name of any shared scenarios, because I believe you can share between Xbox and PlayStation now, let me know in the comment section. I'd be happy to check out check it out. Uh, this video has already been long enough, so I will end it here. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.